You see that? How awesome is that, huh? Pretty powerful. So the biggest thing I want, I want everyone to point out, like look at the percentage of the people in the room that are having crazy success. And that's what's so cool. Uh, they mentioned it earlier. Um, it's, this is a company where it's not just you making money, you can take everyone with you. And that's what's so cool with our opportunity. And uh, so with that being said, we're gonna do a couple little announcements. Gina, is Gina here? Real quick, big brothers, big sisters. We take a couple minutes to talk about what we have going on in the uh, Kansas City market with Big Brothers, and we're gonna do a, a quick little something. Thank you. So I'm not gonna take up a lot of time, but I am gonna take you to church. <laughs> uh, really, I am. Um, so the Darian Ripple Foundation. Um, I'm gonna just really quickly extend our recognition. How many of you do our back office donation to Big Brothers Big Sisters? Awesome, awesome, thank you. Every little bit counts, right? How many of you, we did this last time, um, how many of you are bigs? And it, one, two, I know we have a lot more applications going out too. There's a few people in the back I know, so that's very exciting. Miriam um, and our Slight Edge and Plan for Success, I can't tell you how much these kids need our influence, and Miriam truly can change the world in these children's lives, so it's very important. And um, so how many people bowled last year? Woo! Awesome. How many are already registered to bowl this year? Woo! Look at all those people. Okay, well, I've got some stats to tell you guys. Okay, so Miriam, or I'm sorry, Kansas City has been chosen. Last year we were not chosen. This year we are chosen as just one of 20 markets that they are matching 100% of our donations. That's huge. That's huge. This money stays in Kansas City. So it's supporting not in other state. It's supporting our state. It's staying in our hometown. So that's amazing. Um, so Miriam as a whole, their goal is to raise $350,000 through um, Bowl, bowl, bowl for kids' sake. Ours is called Summer Bowl, so I get confused. Um, right now, as um, as a company, we are 99,416 so far. There are about seven more events to go, including ours. Ours is next Saturday, the 18th. It starts at 10 o'clock. And you know what? If you don't have a team, if you don't know how to bowl, if you don't know how to do anything, just register and come. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be our family fun day. If you are intimidated by registering, I'll be sitting outside. I'll just need you on a piece of paper to write down your first name, your last name, your email address, your phone number, and your address. I'm going to sign you up, and you will show up. <laughs> or I won't let you down. No, I won't let you down. Um, <laughs> So we really want to make a big bang because we want to be chosen every year. Kansas City, Big Brothers Big Sisters, as an agency, was sitting in a room at their national conference with Miriam, with Renee, and with Amber, and both the Kansas City team, our little group, was named the number one agency in Kansas City, Big Brothers Big Sisters agency, and Miriam was recognized as the number one fundraiser. So we really want to give them a reason to come here. So we, we're getting beat out pretty bad by Springfield. I'll just throw that out. Um, if there's a competitive spirit in any, anybody in this room right now. So right now we have nine teams um, who, before today, had $1,821. That's $3,642 with the match. That's awesome. So that puts us um, third to last in the rank of Miriam Fundraiser States. Um, just today, I'll have some t-shirts out there. We're pretty limited in sizes, but they're Big Brothers Big Sisters t-shirts. They donated them to us. We're asking a $20 donation. Just give us what you can. If you want one of those, take one of those home. Today, we raised $602, just with that already. So right now, we're sitting at about $5,000 with our match. But 
We need more. We need more, you guys, if we're going to get that next time. So what I want to emphasize really quickly is just show up. Put it on your David Bird planner. 10 o'clock to noon next week, um, July 18th. It's at Shawnee Lanes, Park Lanes. I'll give you all the information. Just, just sign up. Can you sign up today? Um, I would recommend that you not because, oh, all kinds of food, pizza. It's kegs and eggs, whatever that is. I think that's beer and breakfast or something. There will be pop, water, bring your kids. There's a huge lounge, all kinds of an arcade. Um, it's our family fun day, so. Um, I would recommend you not. You get a t-shirt, too, if you pre-register um, from the free beer, free pop, free pizza. But we won't have enough if you don't pre-register. So I would definitely encourage you to do that as well. Bring non-married people with you. What a way to get them into our company, but to register them and bring them along with you to really see our culture and how amazing it is. So that's all. What I am going to do is we're going to church. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to pass the path. Dig your change. Dig into your change. Whatever you have. You have 20 cents in there. Throw it in here. Like we really want to make a, make a difference. Thank you. So you only get free beer if you register today. Okay? Did you guys hear that? I didn't quite hear that, but I heard that. You know what I mean? Okay, so pretty cool. Lemonade for the little. Same thing. Uh, get your uh, fundraising going. Okay, now real quick, I want to bring Eric up here, back up again, uh, to really talk about this. Um, for Natalie and I, like when we got started, this, like we saw basically what if, but we still didn't really quite get it. Uh, our first convention we went to, my wife looks over and she texts me and she said, uh, I don't get it. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, when I came here for a company that did 100 million their first year, I thought that it'd be like the 1% of the 1%ers. Not saying that we're not, but she's like, she thought it'd be like business suits, women dressed to, you know, to just all, all out. And she's just like, these are just awesome, normal people. Day two, she texts me, she's like, I get it. Anyone can do this business and be successful. Day three, go ahead. Day three, uh, she's like, oh my gosh, we're gonna kill this. And that was the day where we had recognition. So all the people that just came up and told their story, especially the national marketing directors, for us, what that did for us is like, oh my gosh, I can do that. I can be that person. And isn't that the true story? They're all, I mean, amazing people, right? But normal, okay? Just all walks, all walks, all background. I wanted Eric to tell her kind of quick story on convention because Dallas is coming up here pretty quick. We're about, what, seven weeks away? And you need to be there. Uh, it was life-changing for us. The reason my wife are up here now is because of our convention, and I think so many of us have that same story. Okay, just real quick. So, um... Like I was saying before, the Monday night before the convention, so we're talking like three sleeps out from the convention in Dallas, a long ways away. Two kids. I got two month old and I had a three. He had just turned, no, he had just turned two. So brand new two year old, brand new baby. Um, three days you don't have somebody, and, and we don't have family that lives here. Um, so we did what you do. You pack your two kids up and you go out on an eight mile drive or eight hour drive to Dallas after um, you get off work at five o'clock. So we get there in Dallas at, you know, two or three o'clock in the morning. I don't even know what time it was. And um, Brad's like, okay, I'm going to take Drake through the day and you're going to take Jackie. Um, I took a two month old to a three day conference in Dallas. And I, like I said, I have my butt glued in the seat. I have my stroller, you know, I'm like trying to keep her quiet. Um, it was life changing for me. I didn't realize the vehicle that I had in front of me up until that conference to see what was gonna change my family's life. Um, for my husband, he was kind of like, this is your deal. I'm just gonna support you and take our kid around the Gaylord. And um, whenever he, whenever we got there and we were walking around, he was, it clicked for him because he was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen so many billboard checks that aren't lottery related. <laughs> and, and he's like, and there was all walks of life, you know, um, that had these checks. So he's like, if you can, if those people can do it, then we can do it. And, um, you know, we're not national marketing directors. We've been in it for two years, but that's part of our journey. And I'm here to tell you that. Um, I have true conviction whenever it comes to the events. I've, I've had to miss two because when we were moving, we, we, we bought a new house that we wouldn't have been able to without Miriam, by the way. 
Um, but the, the events change who you are. Um, you have a different takeaway for every event that you go to. Even if it's just a regional like this, um, they're key in igniting your business and taking it to the next level because you learn something new. And the testimonies are so, um, like, uplifting. Um, I know for me, like, I, I never knew that an event could change your life like Dallas did for us. And um, it, it started me on this journey of self-development and, like, finding out who, who I am and what I want to do with my life. And it's like, it's changed me as a mom. Sorry, this is long. <laughs> but it's changed me as a mom because um, I didn't grow up in an environment that um, really gave you that boost of confidence that you could go out and change the world and you could go do whatever it is that you wanted to do and like no dream was too, too big. My parents always kind of put that cap on you that, well, you can do that, but you have to follow these guidelines. And um, it's changed me as a mom because I don't put a cap on my kids. And I tell them that you can do anything, but I would have never found that in myself had I not went to an event. So, if you haven't registered, get your butt on the computer this afternoon and get your ticket. And then find out where you're going to stay once you get there. So, but we, uh, we have seven weeks or however much time, like, you can go in your weekly checks and pay for the whole thing. I mean, you have tons and tons of time. So, like I said, get the ticket now, get committed, and uh, we'll help you go from there. Personal websites, I'm going to kind of go through some of this stuff a little bit quick because we are kind of strapped for time. Um, this promotion is as, as supply is uh, limited until supply runs out or the end of this month. It's a great reason to call everyone you know. Hey, you get four pro products for the price of two if you get the ultimate combo, okay? Great reason here. This is the hand cream, even though they keep saying it's the day cream. It's the hand cream. Korea announcement. Uh, we are open for business here, what, about a week, right? Pretty quick, so pretty exciting. But literally, all this is, even if even if you're brand new today, it's you just when you talk to people, it's like, hey, who do you know who knows someone in Korea? Who do you know who has business contacts in Korea? Uh, can be game changing, life changing when you have residual income, but it's around the globe. It's absolutely huge. So, Family Fun Day that's next week with the Bowl for Kids sake. We're going to do that a combined event. So get registered for Bowl for Kids. Uh, break. Or you, I think I'm going to come up here. If they're not come up here quick, then they're going to get fired. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, they're gonna do uh, a raffle here at the end. Okay, uh, with that on the raffle. But the thing is, we are doing uh, a regional next month, and I don't know the date on it, but they do. Okay, but you need to get pre-registered for that, and uh, they have all those tickets. You can actually get pre-registered for the back. So before you guys get out of here, make sure you talk to them about pre-registering for next month's regional. Okay, I'm just going to touch on a few of these key parts of recruiting, prospecting, okay, on the back end of this. And I'm going to speed through some of it. Uh, because we are strapped for time, I'm going to hit a couple little uh, key points home that I think are really important. Um, know your why and share that, okay? When we get into prospecting, it is all about exposure. It is a numbers game. Some people say yes, some people say no, some people say not now. It does just take time. The reason it's two a day. Because sometimes you got to do two a day for a month and two months to get your three, your six, your nine brand partners, okay? And it's not like uh, they don't just jump out of the sky. Like it's two a day, two a day, two a day. So it is a numbers game. You don't know who's looking. And you don't know who really isn't looking but really needs us once they see it. You've got to put the information out there in front of them. Um, I love this slide, amateurs convince professional sort. Don't sell them on doing the business. Don't sell them on buying the product. Share the information with them. Let them decide themselves. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, we briefly touched on our system before. Peak interest, third party tool, okay? That was what a professionals do. We're just, we're just sorting. We're looking for people who are looking. Now I do convince them to take a look. I'll get them, not convince them, but get them to take a look, okay? But let them make the decision. That's how the third party tools are, all right? Um, build a big list, we talked about it earlier. So the two-a-day promotion system, this is my favorite part about what we do in Nereum. I have a sales background. I've done different types of sales, relationship sales. Uh, the job I did before is actually, uh, what do we call it? What did I call it? Pitch sales. I would literally pull someone off, whatever, pit, do a two-minute pitch, and then try to close them. I hated it. Like, it was not fun. 
The money was great, so I couldn't get out of it, but it sucked. I love this. We're just looking for people that are looking. And so what my wife and I do, I'm a visual person. I'll just give you a couple recommendations for you because you've got to find your system within the system. Meaning what keeps you going, what keeps you looking. My wife, she likes to put this on a poster board. Okay. And then she puts post-it notes with all of her two-a-days, all of her prospects, and she moves them through the funnel. When I say funnel, that's really what it is because it is a funnel. A lot of times people got to go through there multiple, multiple times. If you take an oil funnel and you put a marble at the top and it goes around the circle, a lot of times it's got to go multiple times, five, six, 15 times before it actually goes through the hole. That's how we look at this. Okay. Okay. So just, and she moves them from one step to the next step. If, if she's peak interest and then she needs to follow up, she'll go back to peak interest again and moves around until they get sponsored. But that way she can keep notes on what they said, what she said to them and keep track of it. So when she calls them up again a week or three weeks from now, she knows what's been talked about before. For me, I like to make it look like it's a baseball field. Okay, I'm simple. And I like to take them around the bases. Does that make sense? Sometimes they go from first to second. Sometimes they go back to first. Okay. Sometimes they, go, they got all go back to go back in the dugout. And that's okay, but then we put them back on in the bases again. Does that make sense? All right. I'm not going to force them to home unless they want to score. Okay. But we have the best vehicle for them to go score. But for whatever it is, you've got to have some sort of system that tracks your two a day. All right. Uh, recruiting two things, taking people from not knowing to knowing. It's not convincing people that they need this. Guess what? Everyone needs this. Everyone needs either more money or more time. Would you agree? Okay. But they have to come to that conclusion themselves. And the best way to do that is just share the information taken from not knowing to knowing. All right. So peak interest is the one thing I'm going to hit on uh, a little bit harder is to me the most important. You got to you got to take that first step. All right. And so a few categories I like to put peak interest into are number one, like my wife mentioned earlier, how it was shared with us, compliment people. It's amazing when you give someone a compliment, their guard immediately drops. OK. And they give you the ability to actually communicate with them. All right. Whether it's, hey, you have amazing skin, you probably don't know amazing products. I would love for you to try this out and get your feedback. Is that person going to sample it? They'll be like, yeah, I do. Thank you. You know what I mean? It might be, what do you say to the most successful person you know? You're the most successful person I know. And that person that really is, they're like, that's right, I am. Okay? <laughs> and then when you talk after that, they're going to hear you out. Because before that, they think they're the most successful person that you know, and they're not going to listen to you. So compliment people is a huge way, whether it's warm market, whether it's cold market, I compliment people a lot and then share the information. Okay. Uh, another way is mirror match. I love the magazines and, and you guys have, have an awesome market here where they actually provide the tools. They save you money, shipping, taxes. So take advantage of that. But I use the magazine as probably my personal number one go-to. There's success stories in the back of those magazines that relate to everyone in life. You can relate something there to somebody else. Okay. And so I use the magazines a lot, but it could just be something like, Hey, um, call two friends this afternoon. Hey, I listened to this guy. His jokes were horrible. He really reminded me of you, but he's having a lot of success. Even though his jokes are bad, you should really take a look at this. Okay. Now I wouldn't say that, but you get what I'm saying, right? There's a reason you're calling him mere matching. Say, Hey, I know you have an athletic background. A guy that played professional baseball spoke today and you're going to kill this thing. What's your email address? Let me shoot you some information. Okay, they're bringing out this new EHT supplement product. I know that you always want the, that little mental edge. This product is a game changer in that, in that space. You have got to take a look. What is it? I have no idea, but the video does. Let me send it over. Okay, I won't do it justice. Don't say I have no idea. I won't do it justice. Let me send you a video. You can see it for yourself. Okay, so peak interest third party tool. So compliment, mirror match. The, the next way is use your why. Use your why, use their why. And I think this is one of the most powerful ways to, uh, to, to talk with people, whether it's in your cold market, whether it's in your warm market. Um, when you connect with someone, do you usually connect with your brain or with your heart? Mostly with your heart. Studies show that. Um, it's like 80 plus percent of people, when they really connect with someone, it's not necessarily mentally, it's more from your heart. And so the why really is you sharing this coming from your heart. Okay, so those of you that are taking notes, draw a little circle, and in the middle of that circle, write why. And then draw a circle out around that, and in that circle, put how. 
and then do one circle around all of that, and in that circle put what? So when looking at this, and I'm trying, and I'm kind of trying to rush you because I know we're, we're tight on time, but when looking at this, naturally, because the biggest circle is what? You think that would be the most important, right? Because it's the biggest circle? But let's think about this for a second. Apple. Apple products. Why do we buy Apple products? Okay. Someone said they're good. Anyone else? Brand recognition. What's that? Reliable. Everyone else has it. It's what everyone's doing. So let's look at their marketing campaign. Because yes, they're a technology company, but they're really a marketing company. Okay, really why do we buy their products? Because we've all connected with them, right? Do they have the best phone? They don't. And I have every Apple product known to man, and it's not the best phone. It's the, I think it's the simplest phone, it's not necessarily the best phone. We buy their products because of really who they are. Okay, who are they? They're an innovative company, right? That is collectively changing the world by bringing people together. So who they are is they're an innovative company, they're why, they wanting to change the world. How? They're gonna bring people together through their, their what? Through products, their iPads, their phones, computers, okay? When you look at their commercial, it's not all their new features and attributes, it's not their what, it's not their how, what they promote is their why, right? And so do the same thing here when you talk to people, okay? The why is powerful, whether it's yours or whether it's theirs. So, um, you know, being a father, I found something that can give me more time and time with my family and be able to see my kids actually grow up. You know, I'm able to do that because this uh, company we found has an amazing opportunity. We, and all we do is we share these amazing products. They're breakthrough, they're in a huge space. What those products are, it's anti-aging. We have products for the face, we have products for the body, and now we have products for the brain. Does that make sense? Is that different than saying, hey, I got this amazing face cream, you're gonna love it, but you're gonna make tons of money with it, let me call you and send you some information. Do you get what I'm saying? And so, those are three different, whole different realms. Compliment, mirror match, why. why. Why I put it in different categories is, what I mentioned earlier, the funnel, is most people aren't gonna come in because you say this the perfect magic thing. Most people take five to eight exposures. Some people might take 12, some might be 15. Research shows that in any sales position, 80% of your sales happen after your fifth exposure, okay? And so what you have to do is you have to call them up and say one time. So one time it might be a mirror match, and guess what? They don't watch the video. Does it mean you said it wrong? No. It just might be that it was, they were busy, it was bad timing, okay? It might just be you just need to say it a little bit different. So after the peak interest, and you share a third-party tool, okay, if you're not pointing to a tool, then you are a tool, okay? Do you get what I'm saying? If you're trying to sell them on it by your words, you are the tool. Okay, and why, why that is, is because less than 10% of people in, in America want to be in sales. Less than 2% enjoy sales, okay? Would you, are you looking for the 2% of the, the, the world? No, we're looking for everyone because this really is an opportunity for everyone. Anyone can go here, try it out. Anyone can go, hey, watch this. Anyone can go say, great question, let me get you on the phone with my friend. So peak interest is the most important part. The second most important part would be to third party tool. And the most important part is following up. Do you get what I'm saying? There's a lot of most important parts, right? Because if you don't do the next step, it stops. Has anybody signed into any up in the business that has heard from this or seen near him once, twice, three times before, but that person either stopped following up with them or they're no longer with near him? Right? I love those people. Because they're already on exposure four, five, six, seven, and I come sweeping in like a vulture, I'm not gonna steal them. I always say go back to the person that shared this with you, but if that person is no longer sharing this, guess what? It just sped up my whole process, okay? And so if you lose any parts of these process, either the peak interest, you've never started, if it's a you're not sharing third-party tools, you're not gonna be as effective and it will not duplicate and grow away from you. And if you don't follow up, you're not gonna get the sell. Okay, the follow-up is key. Fortune is definitely in the follow-up. Okay, so um, it's all about posture, urgency. As you can see right there, all the things I said, they took less than 30 seconds, right? It could be like, hey, I'm so excited about something. You've got to watch this video. What's your email address? I'm going to shoot over right now. Are they going to watch it? Probably more likely than you, hey, we got this biotech company. 
and uh, I'm a partner of this biotech company. Not that I've never said that, nothing, there's wrong with saying I'm a partner with a biotech company, but the posture and energy okay, is huge. If you go up to someone in the mall and you duct tape your mouth and you go, hmm, 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 Hmm. Are they going to read the magazine? <laughs> Probably because there's something going on. I'm like, what's going on in there? Like, geez, what's, what is that? Compared to, you know, smooth guy and you saying everything absolutely perfect, coming across super smooth, but no excitement, no energy, no posture. You say the perfect words. What would you rather read the magazine of? Okay. The energy, the excitement, the posture. Okay. Did you notice the difference between me and my wife? Energy wise? I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> Be patient. Be patient with me. There's still months I beat her. Okay. There's still many months. I remind her of that every time we talk. Uh, so sense of urgency, but really be normal. When you're so focused on what to say, instead of just being you, you're not going to come across the right way. Okay. And so we don't do scripts here in Miriam. The reason why is when you give your scripts, you're not normal. My previous job, I became a trainer with the company. And we had a script. You had to say it word for word. In fact, they would secret shop us. If you weren't saying the script, you would be fired on the spot. So very high intense sales organization. And so for me as being a trainer, it wasn't sales training. The majority of it, 90% of it was the acting class. Because all the words on that paper was not that guy I was trying to train. I was trying to make him sound like someone who he wasn't. And so it was like, hey, you have all the words memorized, but that's not you. So you need to become somebody else. Does that make sense? So anytime you ever think about what to go do, be the best you, put it in your words. If you have someone in your support system and you say, hey, what would you say to this type of person? Take their words, okay? But put it in your own words and then go say it. Keep it short and sweet. It's just a peak interest. We want to be the movie trailer. We don't want to be the movie. Does that make sense? What's the point of the movie trailer? To get you to go watch the movie. If you knew everything about the movie during the movie trailer, would you go see the movie? So why do you tell them everything about it when you want them to come over to your party? Okay, there's no point to spend 20, 30, 40 minutes when you just want to say, hey, come to my party. I'm excited about something to show you something. Does that make sense? So my goal, your guys' goal, is not to convince them when you're peaking interest. It's to, it's to get them to take a look. And then when they don't take a look, it doesn't mean it was your fault. It, most of the time it's just they were busy. Call them again. Peak their interest again. Just do it in a little different way. Okay? Mix it up. And that's why it's so good to keep notes and know what you've said. Know what they've responded to. Okay? When you talk about, um, you know, that you met a guy and he walked away from his job and do this full time. Guess what? Not everyone wants that. So that person might not go watch that video. But when you say, hey, we can go and we travel the world with our friends. They'll be like, I want to do that. That sounds awesome. And that might get that person to do it. So you get what I'm saying? There's no perfect thing to say. The key is be you. Be confident, have that amazing posture, okay? And then take them through the process of multiple, multiple, you, multiple exposures. You don't know what it is, okay? Do you wish that you would have signed up, uh, you know, Mike and Ray Lynn? Absolutely, okay? Me, do you wish you would have signed up my wife and I? He called me multiple times before I ever watched the video. Multiple times before I ever said, okay, let me, let me look at this. And even then, I was still skeptical. My wife was literally, excuse the language, but hell no. It took her to use the product. And then from there, two more three-way phone calls, okay? For her, and for her to hear that her friend's mom was getting it for a dermatologist. Was it worth it for my sponsor? Absolutely. So take them through the process. Don't force people. Be patient. Everyone's on their own time. If you push them away and you're not being normal, they're not going to answer your call the next time. Okay? Be normal, have fun with it. Peak interest, third party tool, follow up. Peak interest, third party tool, follow up. Peak interest, third party tool, follow up. And most importantly, have fun. Okay? If you're not having fun, I don't want to hang out with you. Okay? I don't care if you're on a rocket ship to, to, the, to the, the golden tablet. I'm like, that looks cool, send me pictures. I don't want to go hang out with you. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, have fun with this. Be fun, have fun. And that's why, like, when we're here, take pictures. I mean, the Periscope thing was just saying, like, hey, you guys are missing out. You guys need to come hang out with us, have a lot of fun, all right? Cool? So, uh, the warm market's who you know, cold market, it's not who you know yet. Cold market, because I get asked this question a lot. Um, for me, all I do is ask them questions. When you ask people questions, 
Guess what? They give you bullets to put in your gun. Hey, how's work? 90% of people hate their job. Okay? Is it pretty easy to find out their why and why they should look at Miriam? Yeah. Hey, how's work? What do you do for a living? How's that working out for you? Awesome. I, uh, I did the same thing in Chicago uh, last month. Uh, and I got off the plane, went picked up my rental car. And the guy there was really nice, personal guy, had a great personality. And I'm like, hey, how's it going, man? He's like, it's going good. I'm like, uh, you know, how are things? You guys busy today? No, not really. I'm like, well, cool. Like, so you enjoy what you do? He's like, no, it sucks. He's like, I commute 55 minutes each way, live the outskirts of Chicago. He's like, I have a degree and I'm not using it. He's like, don't really enjoy this. I should be making more money. I'm like, well, awesome, man. You should take a look at this. What's your email address? I'll shoot you a video. So I was giving him a magazine, right? And he was taking it, warming him. And I said, hey, what's your email address? Let me send you a video. And immediately he backs up and shuts down. Because he's like, I thought I was like trying to get something from him. Okay? All I'm trying to say this is, is that we are so focused on saying the perfect thing that a lot of times we don't even actually open our mouth. Where there was no perfect thing for me to say to him. I had all the bullets in my gun I needed. He hated his job. He wasn't using his, his, uh, his degree. He wanted him to make more money and he wanted more time freedom. Like, hello, like, you're welcome. I'm here. This is like a, a sign from above. I mean, literally. And all I said is, hey, let me have your email to shoot a video. And he shuts down. I didn't say anything wrong. It just wasn't for him right now. Okay. The mag, who's a younger guy, the magazine I gave him, I was on the cover. Is that weird? Do you think that I'd be like some weird guy, like trying to track him down when I'm on the cover of this magazine? So all I'm trying to say is that we all make excuses for why we can't do it, whether we're not going to say the right thing. I don't know what to say. You know, I don't have the success success yet. You can't say the right thing to the wrong person, the wrong thing to the wrong, uh, to the right person. The only way you're going to find that out is to go sort through people and do your two a day and make your exposures. Okay. I did everything perfect, at least for my two and a half years of experience, and for him it wasn't it. And then the next time, I might completely fumble over my words, laugh at myself, make a fool of myself, and guess what? Get their email address and sign them up. Does that make sense? But the only way you'll find out who those right people are is you have to go do the activity, right? And have fun with yourself. When I say the wrong thing, when it comes out weird, because it still does, right? What do I do? I laugh at myself and say, you know what? Even I can do this. You should really take a look at it. You're going to kill it. And they laugh and they're like, this guy's normal, right? Be normal. And then share the information. Okay. But you got to have fun with it and make a challenge of it. Be competitive. My wife and I are extremely competitive. That workout partner is huge. If they're doing their two and you're not getting your two, guess what? You're going to go get your two if you get a text and a caller and say, hey, I got my four today. Where are you at? You know what I mean? Okay, um, but it's all about just asking questions, building the relationship, and going from there. Uh, not what you do, but why. I already kind of hit on this for a second ago. I really take the casual approach that you may or may not be interested. This may or may not be for you. I almost sometimes take the backdoor approach. Like, dude, there's no way this is for you, but you probably know someone who's really interested. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I know you're not interested in, uh, you know, free time. I know you like working 70 hours a week. Um, that's cool. Um, but someone that maybe you want to hang out on the beach with me in a few years, you know any of those people? I would love to share this with them. I'm like, well, maybe I should take a look. I don't know, dude. I'm not sure. I'm not sure this is for you. You like to work, you know, 90 hours. I don't know. Okay. And I don't normally take that approach the first time, but when I call someone three times, four times, and I'm pretty close to them, and they don't watch the video, I'm sure is going to talk some trash. Okay. I know I've called you three times before and you didn't watch the video. And they're like, huh? I'm like, yeah, I've been stalking you. I'm one of those weird people. I'm like, no, we have all this crazy technology. This is a part-time gig. But I know you haven't watched the videos because I know that what you're doing is awesome. Uh, working that full-time job and having that pizza parlor that you work and you never get to see your kids. Um, anyway, uh, I know that since you're not interested, and this is a true story, he lives in Lee Summit, one of my really good friends, a, a former teammate of mine at K-State. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, but since I know this isn't for you, who do you know that would be interested? That wants to come have some fun. Travel the world with your friends. Spend more time with your family than you do at your work. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you the video. When can you be in front of your computer? Okay, cool. I'll send it to you then. I'll follow up at 730. And maybe you have a list of people that I can share this with. Okay, guess what? They go do. They go watch the video as soon as I get off the phone. Okay, so if you can see my approaches, I don't care if it's for them or not. 
All I care is they take a look because when I'm on the beach in three years and five years and 10 years, I don't want that friend to look back and say, Nick, you didn't push me hard enough. And I don't bug them. I don't wear them out. I don't push them away. Everyone still takes my phone calls, but I do let them know what I see and I want them to see it. I'm not going to tell them what I see it, but I'm telling them they need to take a look to see if they see it. That's a lot of seeing. Okay. But they won't see it unless they see it. It's your job to get them to take a look to see it. Does that make sense? We can get some. We can get a lot of people this next week, next two weeks, next three weeks to take a look, to put them in your funnel, to put them in the process. It's that exposure process. So um, four for cold market. Asking those questions. Family, occupation, recreation, motivation. Okay. You can ask simple, simple questions to get what really motivates them. Okay. So, you know, are you married? No, women are crazy. Cool. Uh, we have a lot of guys in our company. I'm kidding. Uh, but family, occupation, like I said, occupation, that's a huge hammer. What do you do for work? Okay, how's that working out for you? Is that something you really enjoy? 90% of people are going to give you something to go off. Recreation, what do you like to do for fun? Okay, well, I like to travel. Awesome. I like to go to the lake. Great. Uh, last night, a, a good friend of mine here in Kansas City said that uh, he had a, his own job or his own business he'd owned for years. Didn't take a vacation in 13 years. He's been to the lake. How many times have you been to the lake this summer? Nine times. And he's going again next weekend. So it'll be his 10th this summer. Didn't take a vacation for 13 years. You think recreation is a pretty good thing to go off of in our company? Okay, motivation. Where do you want to be in life? So ask the simple questions. They'll give you the bolts to go off of. Once they give you that, like, yeah, I commute 55 hours. Uh, or 55 minutes each way. You know what? I work from home. You should take a look at this. And then guess what? If you don't work full time from home yet, you have a magazine that someone in there works full time and you're working towards that. So mere match and relate to that person. Does that make sense? There's never a reason you can't share this information. Okay? If you're not, you're just making an excuse in your own head and you need to get over that. Okay? Uh, if you want this and if you're still not doing it, then go address your why. Address why you're doing this business. Um, if it's big enough, you'll find a way to go share this with two people every day. Okay. Um, social media, be attractive. Uh, social media is more of like uh, attract marketing rather than you know going out like trying to. It's not sales. So, are you having fun today? Okay. Let them know that. Okay. It's not about hey near him near him near him near him near him. Social media. I like to say I would never do more than five business posts or five personal posts to one business post. Okay, I think that's a pretty good uh, something to go off of. You don't want to bombard people, and it might be near him, but like today, if you post like, "Hey, had a great time with you know 200 of my closest friends," right? That's a near him post, but it's more of like recreation, having fun. And so you got to mix and match that in there. You can't just be all business, all near him all the time. You're going to push people away. When you go call me, like I know they're calling me for near him. Click ignore, next, right? So be attractive. Um, just think about that self. If would you answer the phone if you saw all your posts and you weren't sure what they were doing? Okay, and then be that. And I have a I have a selfie rule. Okay, no, you can you can do too many selfies on Facebook. Okay, just in case you guys were wondering. No comments. I'm not pointing any fingers. You can have too many selfies. No more than what ten? Ten normal? I'm kidding. So third party tools, we talk about this, we talk about the magazines, it's five to seven exposures, and those exposures are something other than you. I'm gonna kind of go through this. Anyone can do this. Can anyone go here and try it out? Hey, read this. Hey, get it on the phone with my friend, okay? If anyone can do what you're doing, then you're doing it right, okay? My four-year-old, four or she's five now, she just turned five last month, a couple weeks ago, okay? The 10 core, she listens to personal development every day with us, because we do a lot of audio. If not, I read it out loud. Okay, she listens to all the corporate calls with us because we put them on speaker. Okay, she comes to a lot of events just because we're a family and we like to include them in here. And they usually be on the back row with an iPad or something or tell their story up front. Um, she talks to more than two people a day about Nerium. Uh, before Nerium, she never got to see her dad. Okay, do you think she's pretty excited about this opportunity in this company? I mean, she'll be like, hey, dad, show them those pictures in your phone. Okay. So do you see what I'm saying, how simple this is to be successful with this business? It's 10 core, my five-year-old does it. If you're not doing it, you need to if you want this. If you don't, that's okay too, okay? 
It's simple. Um, so uh, what I'm saying there is duplication. Uh, label your tools. Make it big and bright. We put ours big and bright on the front. Um, you want to identify yourself with the tool you're actually using, um, especially when you're handing something out. Um, if I run into a, a business anywhere or Sam at the airport and see someone with a successful home magazine and they got your label on it, guess who's my new best friend? You. I'll go up and say, hey, I do this. I do this full time. There's my picture. And you need to call that person and do this. Okay? 100%. And everyone in the company will do that. Okay? If there's no label on the magazine, guess what? Here, look, that one looks like that's something wrong with that one. Let me give you mine. Okay? Read this page right here. If you need anything, give me a call. Right? Okay? So label your tools. It's huge. Website, your landing page. These lead capture pages, I always have this up on a browser on my phone. Okay? I'm not worried necessarily about giving my card out. I don't have business cards with Narian. True story. I want their information. If I don't have anything to write down, guess what? Oh, let me, you know, put your information right here. I'm the only one that sees it, but that way I actually have it. It's going to send you a video. Watch that video and I'll follow up with you. Okay? And immediately they get put into your system where it's like going to do a little drip for you. All right? Automatically for you. Uh, follow up. When I set the follow-up, and this is the other really important part of the process, I like to set it up while I'm actually with them or on the phone, okay? So if I'm saying, hey, you've got to watch this video, what is it? You say, I will not do it justice, but you've got to get on this. When can you spend, I don't know, three minutes and watch this video? Well, I mean, I'm sitting home right now not doing anything. Okay, cool. Watch it. I'm going to call you back in 10 minutes, okay? Well, I'm busy. I'm driving. I can't watch now. Cool. When can you be in front of a computer? 7 o'clock. All right, I'll call you at 7.30 and I'll send that video about 6.45, okay? Here's the product. Hey, you're gonna sample this for five nights. Um, it's Saturday, that means I gotta be over here Thursday. What time can I pick this up? When you set the follow-up when you're with them, it makes the follow-up so much more simple. Does that make sense? It takes all the guesswork out of it. This isn't dating. It's not your first date. Okay, what is he thinking? What is she thinking? Do I wait three days? What did that book say? Two days? One day? Just set it up right there when you're talking to him. Okay, don't be weird. All right? If you go on, and if you are dating, go on your first date and say, hey, when do you want me to call you? <laughs> simple. Okay? Um, it makes it so simple for you. But set the follow-up and then actually stick to it. Actually follow up. Um, with the follow-up, um, from there, I always go to three-way phone calls. For me, three-way phone calls are the miles per hour for your business, okay? And literally, when someone is actually entertaining looking at this business, what are the things they're thinking in their mind? Number one, do I want to do this? Okay, but if they kind of get to the point like, hey, I might want to do this, the next thing they think is, do I see myself doing this business? So if you're using third-party tools, here, read this. Here, put this on your face and take a photo. Great question, let me get my friend on the phone. Guess what they can do? Everything you just did. And the through way calls are so, so, so important because it's gonna really take care of a lot of that stuff. It's gonna mirror match, okay? Most often not, your through way person is gonna be able to mirror match the person you're talking to. It's gonna tell them a story. So like, you know what, I can do this, this can be believable, and it's gonna get their questions answered. What I love with Nerium too is that we don't necessarily close on the three way, okay? That's what not, they're not for. They're just to take them to that next exposure. I've had so many people that I've talked to that got on a three-way call. And they're like, I thought this was going to be like some sales timeshare sales thing. And when it wasn't, like it was like a breath of fresh air. Like, I want more information, but I don't want to be told that I have to do this or I should do this. I just want more information to go to the next step. And that's what our three-way call system does. And so it's absolutely huge. So three-way calls, I'm going to hit on this, and I'm going to bring my wife up, but we're going to get it closed down so we can get out of here. Uh, but we edify the expert. There's a reason you're putting them on with someone else, okay? Um, for me, we've had success in the business. I still do three-way calls all during the week, me personally. And so my friends that know I've had success, when they say, hey, um, you know, is this safe to use? I don't say, I don't, you know, I say, I don't know. I say, absolutely it is, but I love how so-and-so explains it. If you're brand new in the business, guess what? You know what? I just got started. Let me get so-and-so on the phone. She's got all the answers to all the questions, and you're going to love her story. So the transition that I make is either they've got all the answers to all the questions and you're going to love their story because I want them hearing their story. Okay, The training we've, we've done today, like it's been great. You guys have learned some stuff. But what was the most powerful part of the regional? The stories, right? The testimonials, right? That's what really gets you going and says, I can go do this. Me and Natalie are talking about how to do it. 
The how you do the hows is, is that mental part, that philosophy, and those stories is what really get you going. So that's what I wanted to hear. So if they don't ask me a question and say, hey, you know what? I know you've only seen a video, but I really want you to hear my friend's story. This might not be for you, but they've had a lot of success. And I think you'll really relate to see if this might be for you. You might know someone who it is. One second, let me get them on the phone. Okay? So is that weird? Okay? Don't ask permission. Just do it. When you ask permission, hey, do you want to talk to my friend? No. No one wants to talk to your friend because it's the timeshare cell phone. Okay? So don't make it weird. Be normal. If you just say, hey, like I do this all the time, like, hey, great question. Let me get my friend on the phone. One second. Is that normal? Yeah. If you're like, yeah, wait a second. What am I supposed to do here? It's a three-way call. We're going to have a three-way. Whoa. Okay? So practice this. But you also got to know how to do it on your phone. So definitely practice it. Um, what you want to give the expert is, for me, and everyone's a little bit different, the people that you're going to, that you're going to talk to your experts on, make sure you talk to them about how they want to do it. But for me, I want to know what they've seen, I want to know what they like, and I want to know what your goal of the call is. So I'm going to let you dictate how you want the three way to go. So it might be, um, they sample the product, they really like how it works, the goal of the call is to be, get them to become a customer. Okay? It might be, they've seen the, the near experience video, they love the extra free time. I just want them to go into the market party Tuesday. Does that make sense? Is that weird to invite someone? Hey, you should just go to the market party Tuesday. Is that closing someone or being weird or being? No. And so that's what's so cool about these. Use these three-way calls to help you go through the whole process. And then transition in. You're going to love his or her story. Okay. So I really wanted to get you on the phone with them. Okay? And then after you introduce the expert, you edify the expert, tell them why they should be listening to them. What that does is it basically um, borrows your trust in your expert. You mute the phone. Number one, if you to talk over your expert, it basically de-edifies your expert. This, I want you to talk to this person because they know everything, but I'm going to butt in in about a minute because I have better information. That doesn't work. Okay? You basically just um, unwound everything that you, got, that you just did positively. Also, we don't want to come across like we're selling the person. Okay? We don't want to be teaming up on the person. Does that make sense? Okay, so edify, hit mute, and go from there. Thank the expert, take notes. How do you get good at becoming an expert to do three ways? Because I get that question a lot. Do more three ways yourself. You'll learn. Take notes. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, but do these all the time. Find a reason to get people on the phone. And then continue to go through the process. you got to keep following up. you got to keep following up. you got to keep following up. One of my old teammates I called about a month ago, three weeks ago. I played professional baseball with them. They were really excited about doing the business about a year ago, and then some life things changed, and, and they kind of backed off of it. She got a new job. and uh, Anyway, long story, but I called him up again and said, hey, you should take another look. I don't know where you, where you guys are at. Um, he's like, you know what? We can't because her company made her sign an agreement. She can't do anything outside of what she does. I'm like, that's perfect. Who do you know who can do this? A week and a half later, his mother-in-law signed up for the business. All because I asked, awesome, well, who do you know who might be interested in this? And now Natalie and I are growing in the Latino market in Miami. Okay? Who wants to go visit Miami to work? Are you kidding me? So thank you. And all it was is because I was there and I branded myself with the company. I wasn't weird. I didn't push him away. Like he, he respects me for what I'm doing and knows that this is a real opportunity. Just not for them right now. Does that make sense? Okay. How cool is that? So, uh, and then, you know, when people get in, if it's the, the starter pack, if it's the bronze, the silver, the more product you have, the better. And so I'm always talking when people say, how do I grow this business? You need to sample more product. You need to send more videos. You need to do that. So one of those is sample more product. People need more product, have them get it. We're not a company that likes you to inventory load. Okay. Like I said, 3%. Okay. The, those of you here earlier of our monthly volume comes from our existing distributors buying product. But if you need product, go get it because it will really help you explode this business. Okay. Um, the sponsor next steps, um, like we said, part of the welcome call when we meet, immediately do a welcome call. Three-way calls aren't only for sponsoring; they're for teaching your brand partners how to do the business. One of the ways we do three-way calls a lot is immediately when someone signs up, we do an immediate three-way welcome call. And what we do is we let them know that they're they're in the right place, that they have uh, a bunch of a whole group here to help support them. But we also get them started in the right direction by getting them pointed to new brand partner training immediately. Okay, All of you have listened to the CDs of Jeff Olson, right? The Come the Kit. If you haven't, put them in your car, list them over and over and over again. When we get started, we're really excited. But because we have minimal knowledge, very little level of knowledge, we have a high level of anxiety. 
Our job as a support team is to help them with their knowledge and bring their anxiety down. Those welcome calls, the training will do that, the regionals and then your support team, so definitely get in there. So with that being said, I'm gonna bring Natalie up real quick, and she definitely has just a few things and we'll get out of here. Um, but thank you for having us come here today. The one thing we really want to, uh, you know, that we really wanted to impose on today is that this really is up to you. Um, before I have her kind of give her final thoughts, can you guys all stand up real quick? So we know where we're at with our skincare products. Okay, you have some amazing testimonials, some people that know the industry, okay, that have been with Nerium, know where we've been, but also see where we're going. Okay, if all we had was the night cream still today. You could completely change the course of your life for the next few years with this company. But we've added some new amazing products. The EHT, we heard from a medical expert. I'm going to say expert just to help you out with your wife. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> expert. But we had an expert literally how big this is. I met with another uh, sell, uh, pharmaceutical sales professional the other day. And he's like, Nick, I was in a meeting with over 100 pharmaceutical salesmen. He's like, there hasn't been a breakthrough in that drug world in a long time. Like a really true breakthrough that really is just a game changer. He's like, Nick, EHT is it. And it's a supplement that we can all share, okay? So all I'm saying is I want you guys to turn around real quick. Turn around. Look in the seat that you're sitting in. That seat has never been sat in before. Okay? So, Whether it's for your family, whether it's for your kids, it doesn't matter what it's for. We talk about the why. It doesn't matter what it's for. Go make this happen. Not, and if it's not even for you, okay? There's a lot of people that really need this. Go find it for them. And I, 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 that's how I go out today. I mean, you know, we've reached some of our goals already with the company. I want more people to be where we're at. And when you come across that way, it's very sincere. You'll get people to open up and listen to this because that's all this is. It's getting the people to take a look. If you get enough people to take a look, your business will go to the next level. Is it tough to get people to take a look? It's really not. Sometimes it just takes multiple exposures or it's you just getting better. How do you get better? Do By it. falling on your face every single day. So go do it and get back up and keep going and keep going and keep going. Thank you, love. All right, everybody take a seat. For the first time in that seat. First time that seat's ever been sent in. Um, give me five minutes. Can I ask for that? Can everyone just kind of buckle in? Um, I'm going to tell you guys a quick story because y'all have bowl for kids uh, next weekend. True story, two weeks ago we went bowling for my daughter's birthday. And um, on my way there, I got in the car, my cousin who's now about to go to college at the same school that uh, Nick played at to play baseball, is like a little brother to me, like we're super, super close. And he, oh gosh, I just got choked up. He's seen me really evolve as a person. I think he's always looked up to me. But he thinks that what we're doing with Miriam is really cool. I don't know if he thinks that he can do it, but he's like always asking me questions about it and things like that. And um, so this isn't sad. We were just going bowling, but just talking about him got me choked up. But um, we jumped in the car and he was like, I want to bowl in your lane and was hanging out. And uh, I was about to say to him, and it almost came out of my mouth. I thought it, and then I was about to say it really quickly, that I really suck at bowling. And he's going to say, get ready to beat me because I really suck at bowling. And I thought it, and right before I said it, I was like, nope, it's test. I'm going to do it. So I said, West, I am so good at bowling, you better get ready to go down. Because I am good, okay? And that was not true. Like, I'm like gutter ball queen. Like, I go bowling with my kids, like, with the little kids so I can use the little things that come up. And, like, and I need the dinosaur. Like, I can't even do it with the things that stick up. It still goes like this. Like, not good at bowling. Try way too hard and it doesn't work. So, that night I decided to do it totally different. I told him that it was going to be great. I told him that I was going to do great. And every single time that I would pick up my ball, I would say out loud to myself, I will bowl a strike. I will bowl a strike. Three times. Not like superstitious. I won the game of bowling beat everyone I was playing with, and on the uh, round where you, I don't even know so much about bowling, I don't even know how to explain this, but when you get the second chance, I will a strike and a strike, both Ooh. times.
brother who is a really great bowler. And I'm like, oh, and he was like, that's cool. I win every time. You are playing against me. And I'm like, you know, it was powerful to me because I've done so much searching to the reason why some people win and some people lose and why some people give up and why people's mindset is the reason that really creates success. Because Nick did an amazing job at teaching how to, but like you guys, it's so, so simple because we all say it different. We all live in different areas now all over the world. I love working with our team in Mexico and getting to know um, Luis. Some of you guys probably um, know who that is and you've seen him on Facebook, but it's so cool. They're all doing the same thing. It doesn't matter where you are, what country you're in, what you do, we're all doing it the same. So. Those of you taking notes, I want you to write this down. And I'm gonna to try to say it slow because I talk so fast that I think it's hard for people to understand me. So watch, well first let me say this. Your destiny is determined by two choices that you make. Choose now, choose well, okay? Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions, because they become habits. Watch your habits, because that is your character. Watch your character, because that determines your destiny. Okay? So, it goes back to the game of bowling. No one taught me how to bowl all of a sudden. It was just the simple fact of me saying it, and it was incredibly, incredibly powerful. So, don't even write these down. I actually just want you to sit still. Think about why you're here. Think about what you want to accomplish. Think about your life five years from now if everything goes perfect, and it won't. So <laughs> let that go. But think about these things. Move out of your own way. Ask people for help and guidance. Tell yourself, I accept my greatness, and I'm capable to receive. Some people struggle with feeling like that they can receive greatness. Um, work hard, be committed, be committed to your mission and your message. Allow what you want to come into your life in. Manifest what you want. Be who you intend to be now, not tomorrow. Know that the universe has your back. Nothing's fighting against you but you. <laughs> Um, focus on good stuff every day, day in and day out. And as soon as something comes into your mind, I'll challenge you to do this. This is an exercise I've been working on myself, is that um, when we have negative energy, it comes from our mind. And so if you take a piece of paper and you start writing down what's in your mind and you put it on paper, when you actually look at it is where you can redirect that energy and those thoughts. It can change everything for not only your business, but your life, your relationships. Um, everything that goes on in your head, once you put it on paper, it seems so, so silly. So that's why I challenge you guys to answer those three questions, because it's going to be so vivid and distinct where you want to go, what it's going to feel like, why you want to do it. Um, and then along the way, because I promise you'll feel a different way sometime during this week, get those thoughts out of your head on paper and then slash that. Um, I've started taking a bowl, and I just take the thought and then rip it up and then throw it in the bowl. Like, the bowl's funny. And on the outside of the bowl is a picture of my family. And so all of those things that come in that aren't good, that hold you back, just sink into that bowl. And then I put something good in, and it makes me go back. So, after you write those statements, I want everybody to write down at the bottom of the sheet, I can, I will, watch me. Okay, and after you get done writing it, look back up here, we're all gonna say it together um, because we're gonna do that, right? <laughs> okay, one, two, three. I can, I will watch me. So every single time after you maybe rip up that thought or that feeling, then just say, I can, I will watch me. Um, so we had a really, really great time with you guys. I hope that we get to hang out a little bit afterwards, um, take pictures, hear stories, 
um, just share maybe, you know, people's nuggets. Nick and I only came here really to help one person get one step higher. Um, you know, and so that's my favorite part is, is hearing that one little thing. Um, because that helps me grow as a person, as a leader, um, and as a part of the Miriam family with you guys. So thank you so much, and see you.